The next characters I want to talk about are Romeo and Juliet, but I've decided to do them separately because I don't want to make a PowerPoint that's a billion slides long and make you feel like losing the will to keep going. So today it's just Romeo. So Romeo, the important thing to recognise about him is that he has two very different contrasting sides to his personality. This romantic, sloppy, but also very passionate side to him, but equally his fiery temper and the fact that he's hot-headed and rushes into things that are not necessarily good for him to do. Highly respected in the community, even by some of his enemies. So firstly, to look at the fact that he is romantic and passionate. Um, he frequently talks about love, rushes into doing things, um, started off, as we know at the beginning of the play, madly in love with Rosaline, then catches sight of Juliet and falls in love instantly with her, which means that actually their relationship moves incredibly fast and impetuously, and they're married within 24 hours of meeting each other. So it shows that he's extremely passionate and very romantic. Well, I think it's really hard for all of us to accept the fact that at the beginning of the play he is madly in love with Rosaline. It doesn't seem to quite flow the whole of the rest of the action to me. But that's how it is and that means that when he starts the play he is very emotionally involved with Rosaline and he's in sadness and all his talk about Rosaline is about love being hard and difficult and brutal and an unpleasant experience. Um, he has this unrealistic view about what he wants from love and his whole relationship with her, well, it's not a relationship, but his feelings for her are very much like the old courtly love tradition where he is supposed to woo her and uh, she is supposed to kind of be very shy and, and not respond. But actually, she doesn't seem to have any feelings for him at all. And he becomes so much a cliche that Mercutio mocks him frequently about his view of love. Um, yeah, he's, he's a funny mixture, definitely. As in most characters, Romeo does develop during the course of the play. Um, when he sees Juliet, he becomes much more realistic about things. On a practical level, he tries to organise their wedding so they can be together. He has a more honest description of his feelings. Um, but, but equally, we could wonder whether actually he is this young waverer that Friar Lawrence talks about. Somebody who falls in and out of love too easily. Somebody who's too impulsive. It could be that. As kind of one school of thought is that. But the other thing is you could just say that actually... This is the real thing for him, and he recognises straight away that this feeling he has for Juliet is something special that needs to be looked after. It is important to recognise that Romeo is not just a two-dimensional character. He is also somebody who, when he's with his friends, is incredibly funny and intelligent. There's a lot of banter that they have between them, makes a lot of rude puns about his pump when chatting to his friends and to Mercutio. There's a lot of banter that goes in between them. And so when he is with them, you kind of get the feeling that this is how he truly would be if he weren't mooning around wondering about where Rosaline is and what she thinks of him. So when he's with his friends, that's where he is at probably his best and where his language and his intelligence show that by the conversations that he has with them. Um, he also is a good friend and they have a strong friendship bond, which shows that he's a very loyal person too, um, just like Mercutio, just like uh, Benvolio, loyal and kind and funny. Romeo does have this dangerous side though when provoked. I mean at first when uh, Tybalt is trying to make him fight and calls him a villain and wants to get into a huge duel with him, Romeo tries to step back and tries to stay calm and rational. But then obviously when Tybalt kills Mercutio, his true feelings come out and he is absolutely lethal then. He is focused purely on getting revenge and getting Tybalt and killing him. And he doesn't think about what he's doing. Um, he does feel that he's different when he's with Juliet, has a softer side and that she's softened him. But he's not always happy about that. And actually, he, when he realises that um, because of his actions at the beginning of that scene, Mercutio gets killed, then he feels quite cross about the fact that he has been softened by Juliet's love and wants to get that fiery, determined nature back so that he can go off and kill Tybalt, which is what he does. Quite early on in the play, um, you get the feeling that he rushes into things. Um, Friar Lawrence can't believe how quickly he's fallen out of love with Ros Rosaline and into love with Juliet, agrees to help him because obviously he thinks it will help to solve this um, feud and to bring the two families together. But he does also tell him to go wisely and slow. 
um, because he does tend to zoom around, rushing into things, rushing to sort out the marriage and doing all sorts of impetuous things that actually cause a lot of problems, um, like killing Tybalt, another one as well. Uh, and then we've got this idea of fate too. He strongly believes in the power of fate uh, and thinks that he is being controlled by something else. Um, I am fortune's fool. Um, but again, you know, it's his own impulsive actions combined with fate that lead to some of the things that happen in the play. You can't blame one or the other entirely. Uh, then, as with all the characters, it's important that you link them to the themes that run through the play. So obviously he links to the theme of love, two different kinds of love, the courtly love with Rosaline, and um, where he uses these oxymorons to show how difficult love is, um, brawling love, loving hate, quite a negative, dark emotion, really, as he has there. Um, then, of course, he has his love for Juliet, and then he uses lots of images of the sun and brightness because he's so happy about this relationship and it makes him feel very different. Um, he's also linked to the theme of conflict because obviously he's part of the feud. Um, although he isn't like Tybalt, who's wild and aggressive all the time, he only becomes so when he actually has a reason to do it. And then obviously, this, as I said in the last slide, it links to the, fee the theme of fate because he feels that he is ruled by fate and that fate um, is all around him causing these things for him. It makes the play a bit darker, the idea that there's some other power that's controlling what we do, but it also it sometimes feels like a bit of a cop-out when you blame fate for everything, because actually some of it is the result of his own actions. So something for you to think about there. And so, as with all the other PowerPoints, the idea is that I would like you to make notes on this that you can put in your scrapbooks if you have them with you, or that you can stick into scrapbooks when we return to school. Um, there will obviously be other tasks connected to it, but it's important that you do make the notes and have a clear idea about the different sides of Romeo's character. Thank you.